America's dad, Bernard Sanders, absolutely eviscerated Michael Bloomberg throughout last night's Las Vegas Democratic debate. So, um, you know, after all these debates, I rewatch it so I get a better sense of what happened. I could give you guys a more detailed breakdown and also I can get the exact clips I want. So what you're about to see here is awesome because it's it's basically a compilation of all the times that Bernie Sanders humiliated oligarch Mike Bloomberg. It's glorious. Watch. But I was going to say, look, we maybe want to talk about businesses. I'm the only one here that I think that's ever started a business. Is that fair? Okay. What we need is, I can tell you in New York City, we had programs, there are mentoring programs for the young business people so they can learn how to start a business. We had programs that could get them seed capital. Okay. We had programs to get branch banking in their neighborhoods because if you don't have a branch bank there, you can't get a checking account, can't get a checking account, you can't get a loan, you can't get a loan, yeah. you can't get a mortgage, then you don't have any wealth. We, there's ways to fix this and it doesn't take trillions of dollars. It takes us right. to focus on the problem Senator, Senator Sanders, Sanders 40, 45 seconds, and we're going to move on. Senator Sanders, 45 seconds. Just, all right. You know, when we talk about a corrupt political system bought by billionaires like Mr. Bloomberg, it manifests itself in a tax code in which not only is Amazon and many other major corporations, some owned by the wealthiest people in this country, not paying a nickel in taxes, we have the insane situation that billionaires today, if you can believe it, have an effective tax rate lower than the middle class. Senator, so maybe you're just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who wrote the code? You, you and your, did. You and your you campaign. And the other con you and your camp. Not me. Oh, you on. and your campaign contributions, electing people who represent the wealthy and the powerful. Yes, those are the folks. Democrats. Thank those you. Are, well, and Republicans too. Okay. And George W. Right. Bush as well. Right. So, Senator Sanders, what did you mean that you don't think they should I'll exist? Tell you what, I mean. what did that mean? We have a grotesque and immoral distribution of wealth and income. Mike Bloomberg owns more wealth than the bottom 125 million Americans. That's wrong. That's immoral. That should not be the case when we got a half a million people sleeping out on the street, when we have kids who cannot afford to go to college, when we have 45 million people dealing with student debt. We have enormous problems facing this country. And we cannot continue seeing a situation where in the last three years, billionaires in this country saw an $850 billion increase in their wealth. Congratulations, Mr. Bloomberg. But the average American last year saw less than a 1% yeah. increase in his or her income. That's Mayor, wrong. Mayor Bloomberg, should you exist? I can't speak for all billionaires. All I know is I've been very lucky, made a lot of money, and I'm giving it all away to make this country better. And a good chunk of it goes to the Democratic Party as well. Is it too much? Have you earned too much money? Has it been an obscene amount of money? Should you have earned that much money? Yes. I worked very hard yeah. for it. And I'm giving okay. it away. Right. What we need to do to deal with this grotesque level of income and wealth inequality is make sure that those people who are working, you know what, Mr. Bloomberg, it wasn't you who made all that money. Maybe your workers played some role in that as well. And it is important that those workers are able to share the benefits. Also, when we have so many people who go to work every day and they feel not good about their jobs, they feel like cogs in a machine. I want workers to be able to sit on corporate boards as well so they can have some say over what happens to their lives. Mayor Bloomberg, you own a large company. Would you support what Senator Sanders is proposing? Absolutely not. I can't think of a ways that would make it easier for Donald Trump to get reelected than listening to this conversation. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We're not going to throw out capitalism. We tried that. Other countries tried that. It was called communism, and it just didn't work. So, so uh, Senator Sanders, our latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll released yesterday, two-thirds of all voters said they were uncomfortable with a socialist candidate for president. What do you say to those voters, sir? What was the result of that poll? Who was winning? The question's, the question's to you. Well, the question was that I was winning, and I think by a fairly comfortable margin. Mike mentioned that. But here is the point. 
Let's talk about democratic socialism, not communism, Mr. Bloomberg. That's a cheap shot. Let's talk about democratic. Let's talk about what goes on in countries like Denmark, where Pete correctly pointed out they have a much higher quality of life in many respects than we do. What are we talking about? We are living in many ways in a socialist society right now. Problem is, as Dr. Martin Luther King reminded us, we have socialism for the very rich, rugged individualism for the poor. Wait a second. When Donald, let me finish. When Donald Trump gets $800 million in tax breaks and subsidies to build, link, to build luxury condominiums, that's socialism for the rich. Wait, when wait Walmart, second. we have to subsidize Walmart's workers who are on Medicaid and food stamps because the wealthiest family in America pays starvation wages, that's socialism for the rich. This, this is I believe in democratic socialism okay, for enough. working people, not billionaires, health care for all, wait, educational wait, opportunity right, Senator, for Senator, all, Senator, thank you. Mayor creating Bloomberg, a would government you like, that works for all, was not just socialism. Socialism. What a wonderful country we have. The best known socialist in the country happens to be a millionaire with three houses. What I miss here? Well, you'll miss that I work in Washington, House One. That's the first problem. Live in Burlington, House Two. That's good. And like thousands of other Vermonters, I do have a summer but, camp. Forgive me for that. But, Where is your home? But, which tax which tax haven New do you York, have your home? New York City, thank you very much. Well, and I pay all my home. taxes. <laughs> and I'm happy to do it because I get something for it. Bloomberg reeks of entitlement in every exchange he had there. He has this look on his face, and Cenk Uger pointed this out yesterday, of, did you know I can fire you? And he has his moments where he realizes, like, oh, wait, no, I can't. This is the first time I've ever engaged with people in conversation where I don't have that to hold over their head. And he's... He's in over his head. I mean, this you know what this reminds me of? Yes, he bought his way on stage. But at the same time, you're not battle-tested, bro. I mean, this is like a boxer for their first match fighting world champ Deontay Wilder. It's like, dog, dog, you needed to have like at least 10 fights to work your way up to the seasoned veterans on the debate stage. Even the candidates I don't like. They've been in, what is it, seven, eight, nine debates so far? So, they've been training. They've been training. It's like trying to run a marathon without training beforehand. You're going to gas out really quickly. And Bloomberg just hopped on the stage because he bought his way on. By the way, nobody brought that up, which kind of upset me. But he buys his way on the stage, and then it's just so clear he's not ready for prime time. He's getting obliterated by every, even... Joe Biden's half asleep 24-7, and he obliterated him. We'll get to that clip later on. But, uh, I mean, like, the attack that he used at the end there, the three houses. Bro, you're in a Democratic primary. You think, like, Fox News far-right talking points are going to work in a Democratic primary? Listen, Bernie Sanders has never proposed a bill, the... Uh, this is my new piece of legislation, the you can't have more than one domicile act. The domicile, is that the right word? I feel like that's a, that's a word for house that hasn't been used since like 1978. <laughs> you can only have one place to live. Uh, so yes, this is my new bill. He never proposed that. You want to know why? Because that's silly. And he just explained it. Hey, I, I, I'm a senator, so I have to live in Washington, D.C. That's one. I also live in Vermont, that's two, and he says the other one is a summer one. And by the way, there were articles about this a while ago. I think that that one was also just inherited from Jane's parents when they passed away. And if you've seen this thing, guys, it's like a little shack. The thing is like, you know, you would think a senator, oh my god, a senator, he probably has like, you know, a 6,000 square foot home. It's like a thousand square feet. It's, a, it's like a cabin so it's the attack is stupid up front, but then when you dive into the details, it looks even sillier because Bernie Sanders is one of the poorest members of the Senate, and he's been in the Senate since 1872. So what, like, what do you what do you think you're doing here? What do you think that argument does? It makes oh, uh, uh, hypocrisy burned him. Uh, see, now I don't want everybody in the country to have health care because Bernie has three houses. <laughs> 
Nobody's doing that, man. Like, who who's your audience for a line like that? It's not the audience that's there. There were multiple times in the back and forths where the audience, and the audience is not even like far lefties. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are like DNC people. But Bloomberg attacks Bernie, they're like, uh uh. They're groans. This is what happens when you surround yourself with yes men and yes women, as Bloomberg has done. Like, everything he's ever said is people, Oh, good sir, that is an amazing thing, wonderful thing you just said. I believe you're a super genius. He's got, like, the Kanye effect going on. And so he goes out there and he expects everybody to be like, Oh, Michael Bloomberg, you're such a genius. And people are like, eh. Why would you say something so dumb, son? The audience is not in favor of it. Everybody on stage, minus Mayor Pete, is like, what are you saying? Man, it was awesome that he got his bubble burst that bad. Um, all right, so let's go through more of this here. From the top, they argued on the tax code. Um, and I love what Bernie says there. Because as they're going back and forth, uh, Bloomberg's like, why are you complaining? You wrote the tax code. And Bernie's like, me? Uh, no, excuse me, you bought the tax code. You and other billionaires and corporations gave money to politicians, and then you guys cut those backroom deals where, guess what? The tax code is basically rigged in favor of you and against working people. And he brings up the fact that just came out recently, which is, um, for the first time in history, the rich actually do pay an effective lower tax rate, income tax rate, than, um, than regular people, than working people. So we have a flat tax. It's actually not even a flat tax. It's like a regressive tax. So Bernie brings that up. And you, you wonder why the politicians made the tax code like that. Because of corruption. Because of corruption. Because they're representing the interests of corporations and the rich. Also known as you, Mike Bloomberg. So Bernie's 100% right. And Bloomberg, see, this is what I mean. He's not ready for prime time. He seemed like genuinely shocked that there was a counter argument to what he said. He thought like he would say, you wrote the tax code and that's it. And that would be the end of the conversation. He's like, no, you know exactly what Bernie's saying, or you should know what Bernie's saying. If you had functioning brain cells, you would know what Bernie's saying. Yes, the, the tax code is rigged because it's bought by special interests. You buy the politicians who then rig the rules in your favor. Um, and then Bernie, I love the, I love the jab where he's like, because um, Bloomberg says, yeah, most of those people I'm supporting are Democrats. And Bernie's like, well, actually, no, plenty of Republicans too, including George W. Bush. Oh, oh, damn, son. Oh, are you bleeding? I think you're bleeding. Um, then uh, Bernie goes on to tie Bloomberg's wealth into homelessness and student debt. I love that. He's painting a picture of like, yeah, you. people say, oh, a rising tide lifts all boats. Actually, no, there's a finite amount of wealth in the system, and it has to be divvied up in some way. And when you have a system where, like the Walton family, for example, six people have more wealth in the bottom 50% of America combined, I think that's a little bit lopsided and stupid, don't you? And then Bernie ties it into, bro, you're worth how many, $64 billion? That's what you're worth. And we got 500,000 homeless people on the streets. About 60,000 homeless veterans on the streets. We got a student loan debt crisis. A crisis where people are up to their eyeballs in student loan debt and they can't pay it off. You can't file for bankruptcy on it. We're holding back an entire generation. Don't act like your wealth has nothing to do with that. Of course it does. And we need a better... Uh, distribution of wealth throughout the country. Bernie schools him on that. Um, and then when he says, when Bloomberg says, a good chunk of my money goes to the Democratic Party, I want you to understand what he's doing there. He's not just stating a fact. What he's saying is, it's an implicit threat. If you, if you don't act nicer to me, maybe I won't give that money. But you're, you're doing the exact thing that he's accusing you of doing. Do you not see that? Like, that's exactly the problem. Bro, I don't want your money. I don't want your money. I don't want your money because it comes with strings attached. You know, you're the guy who's taken a right wing position on every prominent issue. You compared free health care to a free to free ponies. You blocked a minimum wage increase in New York City. When you give money to politicians, there are strings attached to it. That's the problem. Let's raise through small dollar donations. Let's be a party of the people. But he's threatening. He's doing the same thing that Bernie's accusing him of doing. It's like, yeah, the problem is you control politics because you're so wealthy. And he's like, he does the implicit threat. A good chunk of my money goes to the Democratic Party. Yes, and that's the problem. That's the problem, Mike. He thinks like, oh, I'll just bully everybody into not attacking me. 
because then I'll cut off the money if you keep coming after me like this. Man, so entitled. Um, and then the part where I was like, okay, pound the gavel, Mike Bloomberg is done. I mean, he was done earlier on in the debate too, and we'll get to Warren obliterating him as well, but the, the part where he talks, where he's asked like, hey man, like, do you think, do you think really you deserve all that money? And his response is basically, yes, I earned my money. I worked hard for it. And that's when I was like, nope, he's not going anywhere. He's done. He's absolutely done. Because even even your centrist Democrats are going to listen to that and be like, you did not work over 63 billion times harder than a single mom in Cleveland who works three jobs and can barely pay the light bill. See, Michael Bloomberg, because he's winning in this current system, he's rationalized his position by convincing himself, no, we live in a meritocracy. This is a meritocracy. And in this system, the harder you work, the further you go. He's convinced himself of this. He has, which is why he answered the way he answered. So he thinks, no, 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 I have all this money because I'm a super genius and I just work that much harder than everybody else. He really thinks that's true. And that is, of course, the silliest thing I've ever heard. If you think this is a meritocracy that we live in now, I have a bridge to sell you. Some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life, I've told this story before, were living at or below the poverty line. Somebody I knew from high school, Kevin, he worked at least two jobs, sometimes three. And, uh, you know, he could barely pay the bills, but he would work all the time, all day, every day, nonstop. And there are plenty of people, you know, who get wealthy and do Dickie McGee's acts. Plenty of people. The kids of billionaires where the money's just passed down. Even when you have the inheritance tax, they still get a preposterous amount of money and a huge lead on everybody else. So this isn't, guys, this isn't, this isn't a 100-yard dash where everybody starts on the zero-yard line and then the gun gets fired in there and then you all run at the same time. Michael Bloomberg was born on like the 85-yard line. And he thinks, no, 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 this wasn't even a race the entire time, and this is just purely a meritocracy. That's all it is. And then Bernie hit him with the elbow from the top rope when he said, actually, man, maybe it's your workers who really earn that money. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Damn. Listen, that line is a way of basically, like, boiling down leftist philosophy into one little soundbite. That's what that is. Like, you know, you think, because you are the capitalist, you have the capital, you think like, I earned this. I worked hard, I'm a super genius, that's why I have all this. And Bernie's like, actually, you're kind of exploiting the labor of your workers. Oh! <laughs> oh, snap, son! No, you didn't! <laughs> so I love that from Bernie, because that's 100% correct. See, this is the way he thinks. He's like, no, 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 it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. I'm a super genius and I work harder than everybody else. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. And the workers are not valued in accordance with their productivity. They're just not. And they should be. Um, and then, listen, again, they, Bernie brings up worker-owned co-ops. He's like, yeah, I think we should give workers more of a say in their lives. And what's Bloomberg's response? I think this is helping Trump. No, it's not. No, it's not. You just have no substantive rebuttal to what he just said, and you don't have a good reason why workers shouldn't be more in control of their lives, so you're just going to deflect and say, but Trump, my Um, And then Bloomberg goes on to call Bernie a communist. Again, totally loses the audience, and the audience is probably packed full of, uh, you know, DNC people. It just doesn't work, man. You're, I know this works in your little elite circle. It's not going to work against Bernie. Bernie's crystal clear. Bernie fires back. And talks about how, no, that was a cheap shot. And um, what I'm talking about is Denmark, not the Soviet Union, not Venezuela, not Cuba. I'm talking about social democracy. I'm talking about the Scandinavian region. I'm talking about basic things being taken off the table. Um, Bernie absolutely crushed him on that. So let me get this straight. Michael Bloomberg is supposed to be a super genius, but he doesn't even know the basic definition difference between social democracy, and uh, communism. 
I've, I see this all the time, man. There, I, like, I don't know if there's a single billionaire on the planet that doesn't know the dif- that knows the difference between social democracy and communism. They just equate everything that's actually on the left and say it's all the same thing and it's all authoritarian, which is hilarious because Michael Bloomberg is an authoritarian. Mr. Ban big gulps and uh, ban guns and try to con- mic- micromanage your personal life in a thousand different ways. Um, and I like when Bernie was asked the question again for the 912th time about the label socialist. And he goes, and who was winning in that poll that you're citing? Because <laughs> it's true. Like, it doesn't matter that, oh, you know, people feel uncomfortable about voting for a socialist. And also, by the way, Bernie Sanders is crushing the competition. So, again, what does that show you? How many times have I made this point on air, guys? Regular people don't know labels. They just don't know them. They don't know them. So since regular people don't know labels, why would you use that as evidence of the end-all be-all in terms of the direction they want the country to go in? No, when Bernie explains what he's in favor of, people go, I like that. You can call it whatever the hell you want to call it, but people like it. So, you know, and how many times are they going to ask that question? They ask that question every single debate. Oh, socialist, 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 socialist. And Bernie is still leading and his lead is growing. So maybe your strategy to take down Bernie is not working very well. Uh, and then... Finally, Bernie brings up corporate socialism and says, hey, listen, man, Trump's a socialist too, but the kind of socialist Trump is, is for the rich. Corporate socialism, aka corporatism, is when all this tax money goes in quantitative easing to the big financial institutions on Wall Street. You know, we keep giving a subsidy every single year to ExxonMobil as they destroy the planet. Um... We give giant tax breaks to multinational corporations and they pay, a, you know, an effectively lower tax rate than the working class. Like, this is his point. His point is, I'm in favor of helping working people. Trump and the Republicans and you, Mr. Bloomberg, are in favor of helping the wealthy and the corporations. So don't hit me with this, you know, label scaremongering. My policies help regular people. Yours don't. And listen, I love that line. I love that framing. I love it when he flips it on them. And they accuse him like, oh my God, you're a socialist. And he's like, well, you're a corporate socialist. You believe in socialism for the rich and corporations. So you are too. You're just a different kind and a much worse kind. I love that framing. I love when he flips it on him. Um, I think he does a wonderful job here. So Michael Bloomberg, rest in peace. You were just absolutely humiliated by Bernie Sanders.